Hello my fellow gardening gals and guys. Welcome back to my channel, Serenity Now Garden. My name's Jeannie and I garden in a zone 4B. So today I'm gonna be taking you on a little hosta tour of all my favorite hostas that I planted this year and some that I planted, oh, about two years ago. Um, I'll kind of take you through right back here. Um, we lost a couple trees in a storm about two months ago. So it turned the area from partial sun to full sun. So there's a couple of houses I wanna share with you back there before I move them. Um, once you move them in the year, they don't look as great until the next year. Um, so I want to show you those. And I also have a project I've been working on. Um, as you probably know, we got rid of a bunch of buckthorn in the back. So I've just been slowly planting up the area and kind of developing it. Well, I just put in a garden path that I want to share with you. I took about eight or nine of my just run-of-the-mill variegated hostas and I cut them up into like almost 40 hostas. Um, I lined the path, I mulched the path. So let me start by taking you on a little tour of that area. Um, I'll put the clip in here. Okay, so here's the before shot what i'm doing is creating a path through these aspens to the back of our property there so i want to mulch this path i just started putting these hostas there now they look a little rough right now um just because i really had to um split those you know in bad spots kind of but <laughs> you'll see this is the after so yeah i turned it into about 40 plants about 20 on each side um, I cardboarded over all the buckthorn mulch and yeah, then I put the brown mulch on top. So I think this will look great next year when these hostas really fill in. I think it's going to be nice. Um, I just have to keep this area sprayed with the liquid fence really good um, because yeah, there's a lot of deer back here. This is like a wetland area, so got some deer damage right there already <laughs> but yeah like I said the hostas will look better in the spring but they did go through a lot with the splitting okay so a couple tips about splitting hosta is first of all you don't have to split your hostas um, they don't require it in order to grow bigger it's only if you want to split your hostas um, you know it's just a way to multiply what you have um, for free and you can also use those plants to trade um, online sometimes in facebook groups there's like a perennial exchange and you could trade them for other hostas or other perennials um, so a good tip for splitting hostas is get yourself a garden knife this one is by fiskers let me show you close up here it has two sharp edges here um, and then one side is serrated. So um, I'm going to show you how I split my hostas. I'm going to insert a clip for you, but let me just preface this clip by saying these hostas were really, really tough. Um, there's some old growth and some of the hostas were like almost rock hard. Um, normally I use just a you know a garden shovel like this um, that's pointed I take the whole hosta out of the hole and if you can if you don't have a garden knife you can just use a shovel to split it but these hostas were so um, tough that I just didn't have the leverage because I needed like both um, feet to kind of dig the shovel in and <laughs> so this is where the knife came in handy um, it took a little while, but I gave myself some leverage and I was just able to kind of get the knife in there and split it. So let me show you that. And also before I show you that, let me just share a couple more tips with you. Um, after splitting and um, transplanting hostas, I always use this deer and rabbit repellent, which is liquid fence. For some reason, there's just something about like right as soon as you um, transplant split hostas, it almost like draws the animals in. I don't know if they could smell it more. Um, so I do this immediately. I haven't on a couple occasions and that very night they were eaten. Um, so this is a good tip. This says it's water resistant, so it's supposed to last through rains. I just spray this every couple weeks. 
but just keep in mind it smells very bad it has um, like eggs garlic um, some other oils in it and um, so if you're going to be outside or if your neighbors are going to be outside you might want to wait till a time that you can give it a couple hours to dry afterwards um, so that's liquid fence um, a tip for this is i actually bought the concentrate and mixed it myself you could save about 25 to 30 dollars that way um, just get it at Lowe's or um, Home Depot I think one of these is like $23 but if you get the concentrate you can make it like you can make like three of these for about a little over $30 $35 I believe so that's another tip I love my liquid fence and one other thing that I use is Melorganite let me show you guys this big bag I have so I got this whole entire bag for only $9 and 99 cents at Fleet Farm. I'm not sure if that was a sale or if it's always like that, um, but as you could see, there's a, I, I've used a lot of it and there's still a bunch left. Um, so I sprinkle that around my hostas. The deer do not like the smell and also there's, it's a slow release nitrogen um, organic fertilizer, so the hosta love it uh, for the green. Um, so what Molorganite is, is basically dried microbes that have um, eaten wastewater or, or compounds in wastewater um, so they're dried they're packaged and yep they're just sold like that and people use it on their lawns as well um, it's just like a like I said slow release non-burning um, and then also the deer and rabbit don't like the smell so it's a it's a win-win um, all right you guys so let me show you the clip of me splitting my hostas so you could see how I do that. Okay, you guys, so I'm going to be splitting this big hosta here using this knife. Um, kind of just use a serrated edge just like a saw. Now, this hosta was really tough, tough, tough. Um, so I had to use some leverage, just get right over it and just kind of poke the, um, the pointed edge into it and then keep sawing so keep doing that a few times until you get all the way through um, you'll see it takes me a couple tries um, it's a messy job too <laughs> but yeah this one piece of hosta here um, i cut into four altogether. so yeah and like i said it was tough and I'm not graceful at it, so, <laughs> but yeah, there's other hostas that are, you know, smaller, that are a little more delicate, that are much easier to do. This had some old growth, and um, I am unfortunately damaging some eyes, you know, and some of the um, leaves, but they'll look great in the spring. It'll be fine. I did this about a hundred times, so, and there we go. We got it, so that's that. Okay, you guys, so now I'm just gonna take you around. Um, I'm gonna do a little mini hosta tour. I'm just gonna kind of stop at my favorite hostas this year. Um, I am publishing a full garden tour in two parts um, in mid-August. So in those garden tours, I'll kind of just um, go a little faster through my hostas so all the hosta lovers can watch this video instead. Um, so I hope you guys like that and if you like videos like this about hostas please consider subscribing to my channel and give me a thumbs up so I know you like it and thanks you guys happy gardening take care okay so this area is where I'm gonna have to transplant all these hostas they're all a bit sun scorched except the healthy on there looks okay um, so I want to show you this before I move on um, because it's not going to look like this much longer, but I am going to put a vegetable garden in the back of this. So yeah, these will be much happier in another spot. So let me kind of show you. This is some in substance. It's gorgeous from afar. Unfortunately, it did get some deer damage early on in the season, as you could tell. And there's quite a bit of sun scorch I'll show you. Um, and so that also bleaches out its leaves a bit. So I'm going to put this in a little shadier area, but yeah, this is one that you can really see from afar. 
Um, if you're putting it like way far in your backyard, this is a good one. And good old Francis Williams. This one's like three years old. It's huge. Um, it has performed really well, but you can see some sun scorch right there. So yeah, I have another good spot for this one, but I highly recommend Francis Williams. I just, it's just gorgeous and you can really it, see it from afar as well. So it's another fave. Yeah, some in substance in the back and some halcyon right there in the front. Halcyon, I cannot believe it didn't get any sun scorch. Um, because usually the blue ones don't do as well in the full sun, but this one didn't do too bad. Now this one kind of stays a little um, compact like that. It's like a medium size hosta, but I love the blue next to the gold. This is my favorite. Got to show you this one, Blue Angel. This was here when I moved in, so I don't know how old it is, but I moved in four years ago. Check this out. I mean, it's a good six feet wide. Check how, out how big those leaves are. Um... This one already bloomed, so I cut the stalks off um, just to tidy it up a bit. But yeah, I love it. Now this one, I will never split. I just cannot bear the thought of like cutting it and it not looking like this for a couple years. Um, so this one, yeah, <laughs> I just can't touch. I it just it. It's just a little sentimental to me, I guess. <laughs> That's kind of sad, but <laughs> it's true. It's my favorite. So I always look forward to it every year. It's one of the best things about my front yard, right close to my front porch there. And I love it. So nobody's touching this one. So that is a Blue Angel. Highly recommend for a large blue. Okay, so this is my side yard here. These are all new. Um, let me just touch on a couple of my faves. So this one is Maui Buttercups. Isn't it cute? I mean, it's small now because like I said, it's first year. It'll get like small to medium size, but look at the structure of that. It's like this cupped appearance and it's gold. It really stands out from afar. The It already bloomed, but it was like a kind of a lavender flower. Really pretty. I highly recommend that. And just in back of it here is Liberty. So this one will get, it'll fill in the space. It's not a, a giant hosta, but it's a large hosta. And it doesn't look like much now, but Liberty is really pretty once it fills in more. Um, so give me another year or two on this, and I think you'll like this one. I think every, every uh, garden needs a Liberty. And this is a fragrant bouquet. This is one of my favorites, too blooming right now. Gorgeous blooms. Look at the, that flower. So the telltale sign of favorite fragrant bouquet is the white edging. And this will get quite large. I mean, not super big. In, to, in between medium to large. And here's Abiqua Drinking Gourd. This is just a tiny guy since his first year, but the leaves are really tough. Slug resistant. Um, and yeah, it's just a cool structure with the cupped appearance to the leaves. And this is first frost right next to it. Just that frosty blue with like a cream edge. I just love it. I think I got that at Home Depot for $3. Home Depot's, oh no, no, Menards. All right, Montana Ario Marginata. This one will get big, at almost five feet across. But um, like I said, it's just small now. But I like the appearance of the, you know, the gold um, in the leaves. The leaves are a bit more narrow, kind of pointed. And it'll get more like a, a vase shaped once it gets larger. Um, so now the plants next to it are annual salvia. So they won't be there next year. And here's Crossa Regal. And yeah, that'll be more vase shaped, taller. It could get up to three feet tall, actually. And the I like the pointed leaves, and they they get a bit wavy as they get bigger. So it was a good addition. Now, right behind this hasta, I thought it was some in substance this whole year, and now I'm realizing it's probably guacamole. Cause look and see, there's um, like a green edging. It just looked more yellow um, in spring. So. I believe it's guacamole. Don't have a tag for this one. Menards or Walmart, I got this a couple years ago, and they're really bad about labeling their hosta. Sometimes it just says hosta. So 
Humpback whale. This one's going to get five, no wait, seven feet across. They can get almost seven feet across, you guys. There's like a little hump on the on some of the leaves, as you could see, which is why it's named humpback whale. But it already bloomed. Um, this is the second season for this one, so it's got a ways to go. Um, but yeah, it was my first giant hosta that I bought. Really liking that. Let's work our way up here. It's just a regular variegated hosta there. Um, see, Boldiana Elgin's. This one is brand new, um, but it will fill in this whole area. This is another real big one. Look at these leaves. They're very tough and corrugated. So I can't wait till it fills in that space. It's going to look really nice coming down that garden path. Yes. So let me take you to another area here. This is my little rock garden. And I think every rock garden needs a little mini hosta. So... I got blue mouse ears here. Isn't it so cute? I actually have two of these. It almost looks like a white edge um, on each leaf too. This already bloomed, but this I left the stalk on there. I'll kind of put my hand in there so you can really see the perspective of how small this hosta really is. Um, so, yep, right there. See, it's a tiny guy, but everybody needs a mini. And in this space right here, I think it works well. All right. This is one of my favorites. And I love the name. Rainforest Sunrise. Isn't that gorgeous? It's really gold and it has just some green edging. Um, I got this at Menards for like eight bucks. What a good price. Menards is really stepping up their Hasta game, like I always say. But one of my favorites this is forbidden fruit. Now, you could tell it's forbidden fruit because they stand straight up in the center like that sometimes. So you can really see it from afar because the gold just really pops. So I got many of these. I think I got like almost 10 of these because they were so cheap at Menards. Loving that one. Forbidden fruit. And this one, still little guys, kind of looks a little rough now, but bedazzled. It's like a small to medium size. I just love the cream edging. So can't wait till that fills in a bit more. First year for this one, so still tiny. But yeah, one of my faves for sure. And let me take you just behind this one. There is, this one is Dream Queen. So I love Dream Queen. It looks like somebody just brushed like some, like a paintbrush, like with a cream color down the center of each leaf. This will get like medium size. So this is my little side garden here in the shade. Now I'll show you a couple of my favorites in here. I won't show you every single one because a lot of them repeat. Um, but this first one here, just by this creeping Jenny, is Blue Hawaii. Now, this is a slower grower. It gets about medium, small to medium size, but it's just that powdery blue. It's just so pretty. I think it gets a little bit bigger than Halcyon. So, loving that. And right here, this is a June. Everyone needs a June. Look at that blue green on the edge. It is so pretty. Once it fills out, it'll really catch your eye. And another guacamole. This one's like two or three years old, but it's right next to some tree roots, so it's a little bit drier, so it really hasn't grown to its full potential, but hopefully soon. You can see the green edging. I'm like 99% sure that's guacamole, but correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not an expert yet. <laughs> So, this one's Fire Island. This is just like a smaller hosta, but look, it's got red stems. Now, this one was really gold in the spring, and now it's a little more lime color, um, but still gorgeous nonetheless. So, this is first year for this one, too. And this one is Autumn Frost. I had to have this one. This one was a little more expensive because it's a proven winner's Shadowland series. 
Um, it'll get like medium size, but gosh, when this fills in, it's very eye catching with that cream border on each leaf. Um, it'll get a little gold tinge to it. So it's just one of my favorites, probably in my top five blooming right now too. It's so pretty, but first year. And just behind it, we have Sunshine Glory. This one almost looks like a fragrant bouquet because it has the white edging, but this one will get five feet across, you guys. So I'll have to move that fern that's next to it. But yeah, gorgeous gold. I got that at Menards. So those were some of my favorites. I planted some next to my retaining wall here. Um, thank you guys for joining me for this Hosta tour. I just started collecting not too long ago, and yeah, I just have the hosta fever, so hope you join me for more. Thanks, guys. Take care, and happy gardening.